Hello everybody and welcome to Platypus Presents Natural History of the Fauna of Maria. On today's episode we will be looking at the fire bear. The fire bear is a ferocious predator occupying the plains and fields of Maria. In size it is roughly equivalent to a small rhinoceros uh, or perhaps slightly larger than the largest of the bison. This creature has many unique traits that separate it from most of the other wildlife found on Mario. One of the unique features of the fire bear is the reduced size of their mid-legs. The purpose of this reduction is unclear. Detailed investigations of the behavior of this animal have so far been lacking. However, upon closer morphological examination, it appears that the mid-legs may possess opposable digits. Again, the short nature of the arms means this is unlikely to be beneficial to the animal for manipulating food or gathering its food, but perhaps might instead be an adaptation for removal of parasites from the animal's body. The nostrils of this creature are uniquely positioned uh, squarely above the eyes, well away from its mouth. This animal also has a unique slack-jawed appearance, with its bottom jaw being significantly larger and protruding further than its top jaw. The purpose of this is unclear at the moment. However, what makes this animal truly unique is its ability to launch either a concentrated ball or a diffuse mist of some sort of highly flammable uh, fluids at extremely high temperatures. The chemical composition of this substance is further unknown and more testing is required. The only similar animal on Earth which could produce a similar effect was the bombardier beetle. The way the Bombardier beetle is able to achieve this effect is through storing two non-volatile compounds in separate containers within its body. When the beetle gets disturbed, it very rapidly mixes the two non-volatile ingredients, which are hydroquinones and hydrogen peroxide, in a reaction chamber in the presence of an enzymatic catalyst. The resulting reaction produces an extreme amount of heat and force. That force is used to propel the liquid out of the animal's body at temperatures in excess of 100 degrees Celsius. It is presumed that the fire bear's ability to expel its own highly volatile substances is similar to that of the Bombardier beetle. Two chemicals must be kept separate and mixed in some sort of high, uh, highly resistant reaction chamber before being forced out of the animal's mouth. This unique ability of the fire bear is likely the explanation for the animal's nostrils being placed so high on its head. As the fire bear is able to emit a constant stream of fire, its nostrils must be placed far enough away from the source of the fire to still receive fresh oxygen for the body's consumption. The evolutionary relationship between this animal and others found on Maria are at this point unknown. Further investigations of the wildlife of Maria will likely reveal the sister group to fire bears, at which point further inferences can be made about the evolution of particular characters, including the horns and the vestigial legs. We suspect a potential close relationship between this species and the devil wolves, specifically with relation to the position of the middle pair of legs. As such, for the time being, until a proper taxonomic framework can be established, we will refer to fire bears with the Latin name Mesopediparis ignis. The genus name Mesopediparis refers to the unusual nature of the middle pair of legs, and ignis, of course, referring to the fire-breathing habits of this particular species in that genus. So that's it for this episode. Uh, if you liked what you saw and or heard, please leave a like, comment, to subscribe. Uh, if you have any input on what you think I should maybe do differently in the future, um, please do let me know as well in the comments. I'm you know, very open to changing the format of this as we go. I could possibly even re-record some of the earlier episodes so that the series is consistent overall. And uh, a note to the game developers, or perhaps if this is already implemented in the game, maybe somebody can tell me how it works. But if there is something like either a pair of binoculars or a tranquilizer gun, those would be really, really useful. <laughs> Anyways, that's all for this episode, folks. Take care.